Hello, my name is Robert Higgins. I'm a writer from Granard Longford. Just want to say thanks very much to Mary and Fiona for inviting me to be part of this. Um, I really uh, am privileged to be part of it and with my writing, uh, so much of it is inspired by Longford and living in Longford. So it's a great honor to be part of this. So today um, I'm going to just bring you through um, a little bit about me, my history with writing, um, and then some of the uh, things I've worked on in the past. And then I'm gonna finally uh, follow it up with a, a short reading of a, a humorous essay I recently wrote, uh, which is set in Longford. So uh, I felt that it might've been a good fit for, uh, for this little project. So um, to begin with, um, I've always loved writing. It's uh, always been something I've been very passionate about since I was very young. Um, from back when I was in secondary school, it was one of the areas that just came a little bit uh, easier to me than maths or science or anything like that. None of that would have really suited me that well, but writing was something I always enjoyed and I got great encouragement uh, from my teachers. So. That was something I really looked to develop as uh, I got older and I went to college in NUI Galway. Uh, it was around then that I wrote a play as part of the drama society there and it was selected to be put on as part of a, a one act series of plays. And this was the first time kind of that I ever had any work um, performed in front of an audience. So this is my first experience of that which uh, it was really taught me a lot and really helped me improve my writing going on from that. So from there, I really got into writing a lot of fiction, uh, short stories and essays. Um, I was lucky enough to have them published in a number of places around this time, places like Word Legs, The Galway Review. Um, then I've had a number of essays I've written for Sunday Miscellany on RT Radio 1 and a bit of a turning point for me probably would have been when I was published in New Irish Writing in the Irish Independent, which was being edited by Kieran Carty. And it was just great to be uh, nominated for a New Irish Writer of the Year and just uh, experience uh, that whole um, first time I was ever spoken to about my work and answered questions about it. And it was just a really great experience for me. So this was around the time I would have finished college and I went abroad to teach English for a year. And this is when I really uh, focused in on writing. So I wrote a number of plays and screenplays while I had that bit of extra time where the hours weren't as intensive as they are in Dublin and elsewhere uh, that I was working at the time. So by the time I came home, I had a good wealth of scripts and short stories that I was sending off. Um, I did a couple of plays with some with a Galway company called Fregoli. My uh, play, The Streets Are Ours, did a national tour from there, which was just amazing. It was something I'd always wanted to do. And bringing it home to the backstage theatre, of course, was a huge highlight for me. Um, from there, I did another couple of plays with um, the Corpse Ensemble, which I did a, a one-act play as part of their Christmas uh, Crackers run. And that was also adapted to radio then. Then I suppose a big shift for me was um, when I started uh, writing for film. Um, myself and Paddy McGivney, who's also from Granard, uh, we started a film company and we were working along with um, our friends, Jason Gaynor, Tomas Vanni and Chris Higgins, my brother. And we started making films. Uh, so we wrote our first uh, short film in 2018, and filmed that starring um, Brian Fortune of Game of Thrones. Uh, it was called Angel Scar D. And we got a really nice uh, reception from that. It toured a lot of uh, festivals around the country and was broadcast on RTE. Um, so from there, we really wanted to, uh, something that was remarked on a lot was the uniqueness of the landscape and the fact that uh, Longford maybe hadn't been depicted on screen that many times. So it was something we were really eager to uh, play up in our work. So from there, we decided to create a new uh, second short film and that was called Drifting. And we were lucky to get a really excellent cast for that. We got Paul Meskell, who you might know from Normal People, David Flynn, who was if denominated for um, Michael Side, and Lorcan Cranich, who's just an incredible actor. Uh, we were just so delighted with all the actors we were able to get on board. Everyone came down and uh, the whole of Granard really just uh, came together to work with us on this film from the Crossroads Inn and Les Ryan to the Granard GA team. Everyone was just uh, 
part of this film and it was just an incredible experience. So for us now, we're looking forward to uh, bringing a feature that we hopefully will be shooting next year in Granard as well. Uh, we're going to incorporate a lot of the same team that we worked with on drifting and we're looking forward to that. So alongside that, I'm, uh, I recently had another story published in New Irish Writing, um, this time the Irish Times. And so hopefully uh, I'm, I'm nominated again for that in the coming year. And um, we'll see how that goes. I'm developing a novel and a short story collection also. But um, just trying to keep busy with this lockdown and doing whatever I can to keep busy at the moment. Um, so that's a little bit about uh, my background. Um, so. I've also got a little uh, essay here that I was going to read. It's uh, just a humorous short essay, so I won't keep you too long. But uh, it's just based off childhood, growing up in Longford, so I thought it might be a nice fit for this. So uh, this is called Smoke Signals. Smoke Signals. It was a wet winter evening and we were sitting around in Mark's house when Thomas produced a cigarette that caused all the trouble. Where'd you get that? I asked. Stole it from me old lad's box this morning, he said, with the blind confidence only a 14-year-old boy can muster. Who wants to smoke it with me? Myself and Mark shared a nervous look. We drank the occasional can before. Tobacco was a new frontier. One we weren't overly eager to explore. I don't know, Mark said. My man might smell it. Shall we walk up the lane? They'll never know, Thomas said, placing the smoke behind his ear like a rural Irish James Dean. Five minutes later, we were out in the winding lane that led to Mark's house. The weather was miserable and we were regretting our decision already. Will we turn back? We're getting soaked, Mark said as the rain slowly saturated his hoodie. We've come this far, we might as well spark her up, Thomas said. We finally reached the end of the road where there was a gate of a field owned by a local farmer. We all gathered around and tried to create a shield around the cigarette to protect it from the wind and drizzle. We were down to our last couple of matches and losing hope when it finally caught light. Thomas brought it to his mouth and immediately burst into a fit of coughing. Then it was Mark's turn. He too exploded into a vicious bout. It came to me and as though expecting somehow different results to my friends, I put it to my lips and also proceeded to almost cough up a lung. We were starting to wonder why people did this for pleasure. The cigarette was just about to begin its second round when the headlights appeared on the horizon. Panic sparked among us. Just play it cool, Thomas said, ashing the cigarette, but his plea was felling on deaf ears. That could be my parents, Mark shouted, and with a rush of blood to the head, he climbed the gate and leapt into the neighbouring field. Myself and Thomas looked at one another and not having any better idea, hopped into the field right after him. The grass was long and wet and instantly soaked through our socks. We all crouched down low behind the hedgerow and waited for the car to pass. Much to our dismay, the car came to a slow halt out on the road. We looked at each other nervously in our hiding place as we heard the sound of a car door opening and then a hoarse voice shouting, Who's there? Get out of my field, whoever you are. It was the local farmer and he was looking to defend his land. Just be quiet and he'll go away, Mark whispered, more hopeful than anything else. The alternative of actually explaining how he'd ended up there was too embarrassing to contemplate. We waited another five minutes while the farmer barked threats into the darkness and we tried not to move. There was a brief moment of hope when we thought maybe he had moved on, only for our hopes to be dashed when a second car pulled up, this time two men arriving with large flashlights and they began shining them in across the field. Run for it, Mark shouted suddenly and the three of us took off sprinting to the far side of the field. We reached the hedge and managed to claw our way through the brambles and nettles to the next field. What we didn't realise was the next field was waterlogged from the rain and we landed up to our shins in marsh. We all looked at one another aware that we had reached the low. The flashlights faded in the distance and we breathed a sigh of relief that the vigilantes were off our scent at least. We made our way back onto the main road and began the long walk home to Flynn's house. At one point, as the rain bet down on us, Thomas produced a now sopping cigarette in the palm of his hand. Anyone want to smoke the rest of this? We all shook our heads, too cold for words. Back in Mark's house, we huddled around the fire and tried to warm our bones and dry our socks. Later that evening, Mark's mother came in and asked if anyone would like tea. Jesus, lads, 
what were you thinking going out walking on an evening like this? She said when she saw the state we were in. Before she left, she turned and frowned. Is there a bit of smell? Is there a bit of a smell of smoke in here, or is it just me? So that's uh, just a short essay called uh, "Smoke Signals," and it's uh, just a, a kind of humor essay, humorous essay from uh, our time growing up in Longford. I just thought it might be a nice, uh, light-hearted edition with uh, with all this going on, and uh, it had a nice Longford tie-in. So that's just. Um, my bit essentially thanks very much for having me um i really appreciate it um it's it's been a great honor for me and with, with so much of my work inspired by uh, longford it's just uh, really great to be involved so thanks very much i hope you enjoyed uh, enjoyed the piece and if anyone wants to check out our film it'll be drifting we'll be screening at the dublin film festival um next month and you can see it from the Dublin uh, International Film Festival website. Uh, you can get tickets from there. So thanks very much for having me and that's great. See you now.